bond market is waking up. That's what you should take from today's show. Bond market is waking up, and that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Now, of course, um, is somebody, oh, you should ask, what should Liz Truss have done? Let me just say a little bit on that, and then I think some of you are getting, are getting restless in terms of Super Chats. So maybe I'll do a few Super Chats. But if I do the Super Chats, it'll be the $20 and above, and, and the rest will have to wait until later. But um, let me just say what I think Liz Truss should have done or what a new prime minister should do or what a new president of the United States should do. It's all the same thing. I think the first thing that needs to be done, and you could have done this so quickly and so efficiently and so, and it would have had such a profound effect, is the first thing that Liz Truss could have done is she could have said, we have made a list of 500 regulations that we adopted in the United Kingdom because of the European Union, because of our membership in the European Union, that now, because of Brexit, that now we don't have to have these regulations, we are eliminating them immediately. So uh, some of them will be phased out, some of them will be just written off the books right now, but it will be immediate. It will not, it will not be next month, it will, it will not be uh, right now, it's happening, right? So that would be the first thing I would have done, right? Then we put a committee together to start studying all of our regulations, in particular regulations limiting the production of energy in the UK, and we will be working to phase those regulations out, encourage innovation, encourage entrepreneurship, encourage ingenuity. So we are. Uh, so what she should have done is first, if she attacked uh, all the regulations from uh, the um, from the European Union, that would have people would have loved her, right? I mean, the, the base, the conservative base, the people who voted for Boris Johnson all the people who voted for Brexit, that would have been, yes, finally, we're, we're, we're seeing a consequence, a positive consequence of Brexit, because there's no other positive consequences that have happened uh, because of Brexit yet. We can't see a single one in the UK right now. Um, so that would, have been, that would have been the first thing, right? And then uh, talk about deregulation of energy would have, been, uh, would have been maybe not well received by some, but would certainly have shown that you're doing something about it, and would have had very quick, I think, uh, 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 benefits if you actually went through with it. And then, um, then deregulation generally. So deregulation, deregulation, deregulation. You start with that. You start with that. That's the most important thing. Second, if she's going to give a subsidy, some kind of subsidy for energy, and let's assume politically you have to do that in the UK right now, then make it somehow market-based. Make it so that the more energy you use, the more you pay. Because a, a, a flat giveaway is just stupid on every single front, and it's actually going to lead to shortages. So make it somewhat market-based, help people who can't afford it, you know, help the, 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 the bottom, uh, but penalize, uh, you know, penalize in a sense of increased prices, people who use more. Just use a market mechanism to do it. And then, because you're increasing spending on the energy side, cut spending somewhere else, at least to offset that, if not much more than that. That is, put a program together and make a commitment to the markets that you will be looking carefully at the entire budget. You will immediately cut enough to justify the upside on the energy, there's no way they want shortages. Shortages is is a, is political suicide for the party in charge, right? The last thing in the world they want is shortages. The opposition might want shortages, but not if you're in government. Uh, so, you know, you cut enough immediately to offset the energy. That's a good signal to the market. And then you commit to cutting, I don't know, 5% of the budget every year for the next five years or whatever. You actually make a commitment to cut a particular amount you don't give specifics because you're still studying it. You're a new prime minister, but you make specific that's And then you say, once these cuts are going to be in place, 
once we start implementing um, uh, these cuts, then we expect to reduce taxes significantly. And, and if you want to cut taxes at the same time, the one ca- tax I would cut that she did cut, but she, she also included lots of other taxes, also lots of other cuts, is you cut the corporate tax. So, you know, in order to make British companies more competitive, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, what corporate taxes cuts do is they reduce prices and they increase wages. So all of those would have very, very quick effects. So it's true that there's no appetite for austerity politically, but you've got two years before an election. You can get a lot, a lot can happen in those two years that is positive. A lot of economic stuff can happen that would spur economic growth. And by the time the election comes, you'll be writing on the benefits of your program. And that's, that's what you put together. That's the plan. And that's not an objective plan. That's just a good kind of free market oriented plan it's not radical, it's not crazy, it's not insane, and one that respects and pays attention to your constituency, a constituency who voted for Brexit, a constituency that doesn't want to see tax cuts on the rich right now, you can get to that, a, a constituency that um, probably is going to demand some energy support, and you customize it for them, and still without compromising your uh, market credentials and without pissing off the bond market, <laughs> which I think is really important. I'm, 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 I'm excited about, you know, we'll, we'll call this the return of the bond vigilantes. All right, I like that. We can have a segment titled that, uh, you know, uh, Action Jackson could create a short segment with that title. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution. Uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.